big bag of wires, bonnet, some carpet and bulkhead and stuff over there, arch liners and some misc trims up there, side skirt, seals, window runners, all kinds of gubbins. Um, radiator hiding down there. All kinds of crap inside. Some more carpet and stuff. Boot full of rubbish. I think some power steering underneath there. Uh, another misc box of stuff in the corner. Random washer tank. One dashboard. Heat of a gearbox. Lights. All kinds of crap hidden behind there as well. Uh, a bit more of the heater there. Some hoses and miscellaneous rubbish on the on the bench there. And there's just just absolute stacks of crap all over the place. must be some kind of miracle this is an actual vlog about the solar skate and it's been a long time coming uh, I don't think I've done anything like this for over a year in fact quite a long way over a year uh, I think the last one was a track day at Landau which was summer 2017 so horrendous horrendous effort I'm really sorry but most of that is down to the fact the car has been off the road for a fair length of time over a year now um, I did promise to do a vlog for the Nürburgring and we did go to the Nürburgring September 2017 again. Um, I did do a great amount of vlogging to be fair. I spent most of the time wandering around with my jaw on the floor wondering what the hell was going on because it is a nutty, nutty place. So good. Um, but yeah, realistically, vlogging took a bit of a back seat and I just concentrated on enjoying the circuit, enjoying my time there and, uh, and not dying, which was a success. Um, next time we go, which we will definitely do, hopefully later on this year, maybe, um, I'll strive to do a bit more vlogging and get something up together that you guys can watch. But on this vlog here, basically, all we're gonna be doing is catching up on what has been happening over the last year or so, uh, as the car has been off the road. So I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a, um, a poke around along with me and along with my new camera, which I'm recording on now, which is a Panasonic G80, which will hopefully prove to be a little bit better than filming on a GoPro and my phone. But uh, with that will remain to be seen. So let's have a look. So here she is in a pretty extreme state of disassembly, which is how it spent most of the last year. Well, in actual fact, it does currently sport a front bumper and some front wings, so it's actually more together than it has been for a fair while. Um, the reason it did come off the road originally was for the cage to be built, and the cage is something that I've wanted to do since the project began, really, or at least uh, when it began seriously. Um, Dow Sol chassis is famously not the strongest in the Honda world, uh, quite a lot of flex at the limit. Um, I never found it horrendously bad, but it could definitely see some improvement. So that was part of the reason the cage went in. Obviously the other bit is to protect my bonds should I put it sunny side down, which I'm not planning on doing anytime soon. And here is said cage with the roof removed. So I can see it a little bit better. Uh, built by Matt Urch from Urchfab. And you really need to check out his YouTube channel because he's been putting a, a hell of a lot of effort into it recently. And his fabrication work is definitely worth a watch. He does not mess around. Um, so what have we got here? We've got um, some gussets on the A posts. And on the B post back there, hopefully you can see. Um, we've got, obviously, the main hoop. And then these A post bars that come all the way down. And then the, I guess you call it the windscreen bar across the top. And then it goes back through the firewall 
at the rear and they go down to the floor above the rear chassis legs and then join to a rear strut bar as well and then we've got some single door bars in there too and that's more or less it it is built to msa standards so if i did decide to ever compete with it then it's all all up to regs already i don't need to change anything um obviously got the harness bar back there as well he has done an absolutely amazing job so cheers matt it's it's spot on i was really really chuffed when i picked it up originally and uh still chuffed now actually so he's done a done an astounding job fair play to him and definitely check out his youtube these little fellas go down through the firewall and attach to the at the top of the chassis legs which i would show you but currently the boot is full of stuff so um maybe i'll show you another time in fact most places are, are full of stuff when you take a car apart even a relatively small car like the Dow Sol, you do end up with a lot of crap that you need to store in a lot of places and i don't ha really have a lot of places so everywhere to be fair is a bit of a mess so i'm looking forward to bolt it together just so i can actually move around my garage again um anyway Obviously I had to strip the car completely apart for Matt to put the cage in and so from there the build has spiralled out of control a little bit. So let's have a look at what I've done. I'll try and be a little bit chronological but it has been a while since I've done some bits and pieces so you have to bear with me. I remember one of the first things I did was sort out the, the seat mounts which we can see down here. I mean, you can tell I did it fairly early on because I've actually gone to the effort of painting it-ish. Uh, so I cut out the, the standard hump thing that went here for the, for the stock seat, um, welded on these tabs here for the front of the seat and then welded in this bit of bar across the, across the back with some captive nuts in. So the seats now sit really, really nice and low. Um, and nice and solid as well on those mounts. I've obviously done the, the same on the passenger side as well, which you can't see because it's full of crap. Um, what else we've done? Well, removed a bit of, bit of sound deadening and bits and pieces on, in the uh, hope of saving a little bit of weight because of all the steel that's now gone in. And then what I also did is take, obviously, the complete electric rear, rear window mechanism out, which was a bit of a shame because I really like that feature on this car. Um, but it was never ever going to work with the cage in. So I made a Lexan screen on some little quick release doobies across the bottom, um, which I was well happy with until the cage got built. And I realized even with the quick release fixings, it was an absolute nightmare to try and get the screen out with the bars in place. So a bit of a wasted effort, but it gets it in there regardless. Um, I also once the cage came back, made these uh, made these door cards up because the stock door card was never going to fit with the door bars. It basically, even with these slim ones on, they more or less touch. Well, it's not more or less, they do touch. Um, so I was able to reuse the top of the original door card and made these lower bits out of some alley panel, uh, which is foam filled within sheets of alley either side real light but pretty strong um didn't do too bad a job on that to be fair i've got some door pulls to go on uh, that go into a captive nut that i've wired into the door and boshed a speaker in there as well um, so they, they turned out fairly well but the major thing that I had to make uh, way for the cage to go in was the standard mounting for the roof which is a real shame actually because the the stock Honda version uh, on the manual Del Sol at least is really really good I think real simple um, same mechanism to remove the roof from the car as it is to lock it in the boot so I wanted to retain as much of that as possible um, and in the end uh, I could retain basically zero of it it's because Matt was absolutely adamant he needed to get these roof bars up and out of the way as far as he possibly could and of course he was absolutely right in doing that because even with the bar all the way up there 
and the seat all the way on the floor. Clearance with the seat in and helmet on is still super tight and I'd rather not be uh, bouncing my head off of a big steel tube every time I go around a corner. So it's just about, just about right now with the mechanism in place it was never going to work. And I reckon it probably took most of the year that the car's been off the road to decide how I'm going to mount the roof again without it being an absolute pain in the arse to take on and off. And I think I did a, a fairly reasonable job. Um, so basically, it is quite simple. Just took a little bit of uh, head scratching and engineering to get it to work. So I welded these tabs on all four corners. Uh, well, I say welded. Calling it a weld is probably a bit strong because my welding is terrible. Um, and then I created the brackets on the bottom edge of the roof. So stripped down all the old old mechanism, threw it away, cut down these little um, bracket things here and made some more. And then these quick release pins basically slide through the metal bracket, through this little rubber bush and then lock in through these tabs. And it works works really bloody well actually. Uh, they've got these little ball bearings in um, which which lock them in and stop them rattling around so um, yeah all works rather well and then I've modified the frame in the boot to accept the the same pins and then these little brackets here uh, so it all fits in nicely in the back as well but really the most major job that followed the cage uh, was sorting out the crusty rear arches which had, again, been on my list since, basically since I bought the car. Um, they weren't horrendous, but they were bad enough that they had to be done. So I might bosh up a few photos to show you exactly what I did, but um, more or less got some repair panels, uh, the remains of which are just there, um, and just cut a little bit off of the back of the seal and uh, the top of, or the bottom of the quarter rather, and then another section just to the rear of the arch there. Welded them in and threw some filler at them. Sounds so easy in, um, in word form, but in reality it was a pain in the arse. Also welded up the aerial hole, which I did an absolutely abysmal job of, which is why there's so much filler in it. Um, but it was kind of my first attempt in doing such a thing, and I've learnt a lot already. So with any luck, if I should ever do that again, it wouldn't need 10 ton of filler in it to smooth it out. I figured as I was doing this panel anyway, it would make sense to do the rest of the bodywork as well. Um, and so just gone through, tidied up a few dings and bits and pieces in the doors and the wings and basically every panel. Um, and ooh, also got rid of the standard wing mirrors which were absolutely huge and way to turn electric mirrors um, and replace them with these little feathers here which are an awful lot lighter and an awful lot more difficult to see out of which is ideal um, and kind of all this resulted in there being an awful lot of spare wire in the loo. So a big job was also stripping that back down and removing as much crap from it as possible, which turned out to be an awful lot. Um, obviously the electric rear window also heated, electric mirrors also heated, the stereo which I've done uh, a whole new loom and bits and pieces for, which I'll go into in a minute. All the ABS wiring's come out, absolute stack of ABS crap in fact. There used to be a big old pump uh, which sat in that corner there, um, its own fuse box, stack of wiring, big ECU in the back to uh, obviously all the sensors and whatnot. Uh, that saved by far the most weight of anything I've done and it was well worth doing. Um, and so there was some wiring for the roof um, alarm system and, and various other gubbins which all came out. So. Worth doing, I think. So that stereo that I mentioned 
Obviously this is a bit of centre console underneath this dust and usually the stereo would sit just about there which obviously it does not anymore because those are the oil gauges and my new window switches uh, which I'll touch back to in a moment but instead of the normal head unit I have got a little Bluetooth marine amplifier which will eventually sit there and then that I can just connect that via my phone or USB port or whatever and that just then links into the front door speakers which will go there and that is it so it's a nice simple solution and I've had it all wired up on the table and actually it sounds sounds pretty bloody good so that should be quite good and save quite a lot of weight as well and the yeah, the window switches which obviously were originally in the door card which now doesn't exist actually was a really complicated system it had a big ECU that went in the center console and ECU I think or, or some kind of control unit in the doors as well so all of that's gone out got these two switches two or three cables or something that run to the doors mad weight saving again and obviously switch panel looks cool as hell well obviously you can't see it but I did spend quite a lot of time when it first came back from from having the cage trying to make the carpet and bits and pieces of trim fit back in because I want to try and keep this as streetable as possible uh, unlike cars I may have had previously so carpet's going back in, I've removed quite a bit of sound deadening so it's not going to be the height of luxury but hopefully it will be bearable so all the standard heating is staying as well which is littered around the garage but that is the main reason that it's not got a dash bar because I really struggled to fit one around all of the heating stuff that goes in there and I didn't really want to get a, a little lightweight track one because I've had experience with them in the past and they're nowhere near as good as the standard standard lump so I thought I'd stick with what worked, what I knew that worked and work around it so yeah the carpet goes back in um, I've made these little brackets here so I can plate across the back and I've made a bulkhead which you can just about see over there, that grey bit of shenanigans, uh, which bolts in as well. Um, and the dash I've chopped around the cage so that all fits back in and stuff as well, which I think, there she is. Uh, again, covered in about an inch of dust. So hopefully the interior should be a reasonable place to be. Um, certainly better than, as I say, previous cars that I've owned, which have been completely gutted and absolutely disgusting to drive on the road. And now round the front, which has been the main source of time consumption over the last few months. Uh, originally, I, I wasn't actually going to do anything at all in the engine bay because there was absolutely no reason to take the, uh, the old engine out. It all worked and it just seemed like a, a massive amount of effort that would have been totally unnecessary. However, I may have purchased a new engine uh, so I figured if it was going to come out anyway I may as well take it out now and paint the engine bay at the same time and then I figured as the engine was out it would make sense to clean up the engine bay a little bit and I figured if I was cleaning up the engine bay a bit I may as well weld up some holes may as well do some filling and smoothing may as well get rid of this stock seam sealer and tidy that all up and you, you know how it goes it just gets Get out of control. Um, so my originally fairly battered old track car is now going to have a pretty show-worthy engine. Well, I, I was going to say show-worthy engine bay. I have done the work, so it's all a bit ropey. But it's certainly going to be a lot better than it ever needed to be. So it should be should be fairly decent anyway. And covered in oil and brake dust and mud within a few months of the car being back on the road, no doubt. And I'll lose all. Uh, all motivation to keep it clean that's one of those things uh, something that was fairly useful actually is I've done a little bit of fabrication around the front um, so made this made this dimple dyed slam panel 
Um, there's aero catches now attaching the bonnet, or at least when the bonnet is attached to the car, there will be aero catches attaching it. So the original catch could go in a bin. So in, in its place, I cut out the original slime panel and made this dimple die jobby. And then made a couple of brackets underneath, uh, which attach the, an oil cooler, runs between there and that hole over there. And then the original PAS cooler on that stud that runs back around here. And then the Mishimoto radiator attaches on the brackets there. And it all fits really rather lovely. And I might put a photo up just to show you that I'm not lying. Also, whilst we're down here, I did fab up this uh, little towing point thing, which, let's have a look, basically allows the tow strap to be fitted just here. Oh, I think it's the way around, actually. And then you can also fold it up and suck it away under this little noggin, so it works quite well. Ordinarily, they've got a little tow hook thing that comes down here, but it's a bit of a nightmare to access, especially with the front lip installed, so I think this is a much better solution. Even with my crappy welding, I'm pretty sure it's got enough tie-ins to the chassis leg and the cross member and whatnot to survive the abuse of me being towed out of the kitty litter or onto a trailer or whatever. But as they say, there's only one way to find out, so time will tell. The new engine, I'm sure that's what you're most excited about, as am I. I'm not going to reveal anything at the moment, uh, but it is a pretty tasty bit of kit, so you'll look forward to seeing it. And to be fair, once the car is painted, it's gonna be fairly high up the list of jobs to do to, to pop it in, get it right in there. So it won't be too long until you get to see exactly what's going to be powering this thing, but it should be fairly potent. So I reckon it's probably a good idea to run you through exactly what was making this car tick before I did rip it apart. I mean, I'm close to forgetting most of the stuff, so you've obviously got no hope. So I thought we'd have a, have a quick rundown of everything that's bolted on it already, or was bolted on it before, and it makes it work. So we've got the Advan RGs and Yoko ADA-Rs, awesome wheel, and awesome tyre as well. Uh, wheels desperately need a refurb, they have done ever since I've owned them, um, which will actually be happening now with any luck. Uh, tyres, I think, are good. Uh, inside here we've got a Meister R Zeta R coilover, uh, hard race camber arm you can see just up there, um, hard race lower arm bushes and bits and pieces drop links what have you underneath there which you're never going to be able to see. And inside the engine bay we've got a DC2 steering rack and also a DC2 anti-roll bar in there as well. And round the back, it's pretty much the same story. So we've got uh, an ADI-R, uh, a Meister R coilover, a very dirty looking one, some hard race arms, front and, and back, you definitely cannot see the uh, the front arms, um, and some shiny looking drop links, a DC2 anti-roll bar again, this big old Zorscht, which is uh, gonna be going in the bin and I'm gonna be making a new one. Ah, oh, my lights just died, perfect timing. And actually, one thing I did forget, which is probably one of my favorite things, is these big old stoppers up front. Uh, K-Sport six pots uh, with a two-piece vented disc and DS2500 pads. And realistically, the DS2500s do an incredible job considering how light the car is and how big the brakes are. I really don't need anything more serious than that before any track hounds pipe up and say they're rubbish. Actually, in this instance, they're really rather good. And that's more or less it really. So quite a simple spec, all things considered, um, but it did work really well. And I have seen no reason why with the other additions that I made over the last year or so, it shouldn't work really, really well again. So I'm looking forward to trying it back out and seeing what difference everything's made really. Um, and I think, that's more or less it for this vlog. Um, it may seem a little bit thrown together and that's mainly because it has been completely thrown together. Uh, I just wanted to get back into the swing of things really for myself and obviously give you guys a bit of an insight into what I have been doing for the last year or so, even though I haven't been out blazing around any tracks. I've mostly been in here spanning away. Um, it shouldn't be too far away, 
and I say that very loosely, uh, from being back on the road, there's not a great deal left to do, but saying that, I haven't got a time scale. I refuse to admit to any time scale that I'm working towards. Um, but I am going to try and be a little bit heavier on the vlogs, and that shouldn't be hard seeing as I've not been on the vlogs at all. But I am going to do a couple throughout the painting procedure. It's something that I'm going to attempt mostly myself, uh, with a bit of assistance from uh, a friend and a work colleague just showing me exactly what I should be doing and he'll probably lay down most of the colour um, because it's not something I've never attempted before and although I'm willing to do most of the stuff I probably know my limits and I don't want it to be absolute trash so he's going to do the, the important bits I would probably say so yeah a couple of vlogs throughout the painting procedure I'm going to do a few more as and when things get bolted back on the car uh, once it is back in the garage, um, which should hopefully be a bit more interesting and make a bit more sense than it does now uh, when I'm just wandering around opening boxes and pointing at stuff. Actually bolting stuff back on, you should see exactly how things fit together and it should be quite exciting as it actually becomes a car again and not just a pile of dusty parts. So with any luck, it shouldn't be too long until it does get in the uh, get in the workshop and I'll start getting it prepped for bait and I shall catch up with you then hopefully you've enjoyed the watch see you soon oh and if anyone's interested in receiving some more regular updates the uh, only platform I seem to be able to reliably keep more or less up to speed is my Instagram so if you want to give that a follow at Solarscape pretty simple and uh, if you want to give that a follow I'd be really happy so I think that actually is it now so Bye again.